Hi, I'm Mark Steiner. Hi, I'm Niall Steiner. Welcome to another Berglund Instruments tutorial. So let's talk about updating the firmware of your new EVI. Something I want to say first about this is very important, and that is the major updates to the firmware will often reset the new EVI to their default settings, and this includes sensor adjustments. Now if you do update from version 1.0.5 or higher, it will keep those sensor adjustments, but there are other things that could also still reset, and you will be required to set it up again to your liking after the update. So please take notes or take pictures or both if you're unsure. The firmware update steps are in the manual for the new EVI, and I really recommend reading through that manual completely. There are just so many wonderful, powerful features and, that are quite unexpected with this instrument, and it'll just make your playing experience and performance much better if you do that. I also do recommend when you read that manual, imagine my voice saying all those words. Um, our feedback has really shown us this has made it a lot more effective. But let's move on now and go through those steps here. When new features or bug fixes are released, the updates for the firmware are supplied in the .hex format. When you power on the new EVI, it's going to show the current firmware version. So let's look on the screen here. In the lower right there, you see version 1.2.8. The firmware upload is done using a software tool called the Teensy Loader. It can be downloaded from the link we're showing here. I'm also going to put that link in the description of this video. So when you plug your new EVI into your computer, you want to do that through, there's a USB port on the side of the new EVI, and then that plugs through USB into your computer. Now sometimes the computer is not going to see the new EVI, and usually what's happening in that case is you're using a cable that is meant not for data transfer, but simply for charging something. And so if, that, if that's what you find is happening, you want to make sure you purchase a cable that is made for data transfer and says that on the packaging. Here we're seeing how the TNC loader looks on a MacBook Pro. At the bottom of that little window, it's just going to show the most recent hex file that's been loaded in to the TNC loader itself. We want to go to the TNC software and click on this little button that looks like a piece of paper. That's going to let us browse and find the hex file of the latest update and then select that file. We're going to be replacing this one up here by clicking on the open button. Now you can see up here it has been replaced with that update. It's not in the new EVI yet, we've just got it in the Teensy Loader. Now if you get a message in the Teensy Loader app saying that the hex file you've selected is too big, just ignore that completely and put your EVI in program mode anyway. The board version will be recognized and the hex file can be uploaded. If the app is in auto mode, it will upload as soon as you get the EVI in program mode. Otherwise, you just need to click program and reboot after the Teensy chip has been recognized. And the Teensy picture in the app has gone from faded to normal. But I do prefer just using the auto mode. So click on auto, making it bright green, and as soon as the EVI is in program mode, it's going to go ahead and load that software right in automatically. Ding. Reboot OK. And at this point you may need to manually reboot the instrument just by turning it off and back on. So we just saw how in auto mode that's going to program the EVI and update the firmware as soon as the EVI or the TNC itself basically is seen by the computer and the application. But let's show you now how to make that happen and put the EVI in program mode. To restart the new EVI in program mode, making it visible for the TNC software, press all four buttons by the new EVI display simultaneously while the display is not active. You can also restart the TNC in the new EVI by pressing the TNC button as shown here, with the new EVI opened up a little bit. And sometimes this actually is necessary if you've done an upload attempt and the TNC inside of the new EVI has frozen up. You might find it difficult pressing all four buttons right at the same time. A lot of people think that's because you're just a bad person, but really it has more to do with psychosomatic time dilation. The most common solution for this is to use an orange Tortex Dunlop 0.6mm guitar pick. Check out how this works. Now, not everyone who plays EVI is a guitar player, 
or uses Dunlop, so we do have other solutions. We can also use a simple quarter. We found that no other coins will work for this, uh, so if you're not living in the United States or you don't have any quarters, then uh, go ahead and shoot us an email, we'll see what we can do. Of course the best solution is to use the included Berglund Instruments 4-button presser. It's just a small piece of plastic that is completely flat and will make it really easy to press them all four at the same time. And it has a very convenient handle that's shaped like Nile Steiner. Quick! Quick! It's that easy.